All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Barsham Rakar Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson going into how a lot of people are going to try and drag brothers that believe in Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai now, man. And what, the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of our family members or the family members of our women. Or the family, or the family members of people that we're associated around, or whatever, they are influences on the people that are around us, man. Right? So, brothers that have women, or whatever, their 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 family, or their friends are are trying to whisper in their own um family members or their friends' ear to try and tell them to do certain things, right? Which ultimately is gonna like decide how that person interacts with us man right for example <clears throat> this thing that everybody took all around the world right but loads of people didn't that are israelites they didn't take it and then loads of other people that are like um more more in the know they didn't take it as well right but a lot of people did take it and because they've took it and already been compromised now now they want to try and make it seem like it's a good idea to take it and that nothing's wrong with it because they want to try and bring you down as well. Just like how Eve brought Adam down, right? Eve, when she when she sinned against Yahweh, she didn't just settle it in her mind as though she's done wrong and left it at that. She made sure to make sure that Adam also fell, right? And that's what a lot of people are going to try and do to us, man. Because they fell and because they stumbled, they're going to try and see if they can get us to stumble as well. So that they can feel less guilty about what they did, man. And that's why I've got this image here. On the screen of this particular thing, which we know is mentioned in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse down to the 17th verse, right? But then this same thing is also mentioned in Revelation, the 16th verse, I believe. It's mentioned in Revelation, the 15th verse, I mean 15th chapter, Revelation, the 16th chapter also. And it's mentioned in Revelation, the 19th chapter and the 20th verse. And it's mentioned in Revelation, the 20th chapter and the 4th verse and Revelation 14 verse 9 and 10 oh, it's also mentioned right and as when this thing gets made mandatory or starts becoming pushed more in a public eye right and people start using it more and more as an everyday use you're going to see a lot of our so-called family and friends right they're going to all of a sudden want to try and push it on us once they've took it because they're going to feel guilty about taking it themselves but they're already going to know that they're through so then they're going to try and see if they can get us to do it man and that's why it's so important that we seek our own salvation with fear and trembling, man, rather than just trusting in what somebody else is going to say. Because I can tell everybody on, on, on this lesson right now not to take it, but I better make sure that I don't take it myself. And you can tell everybody that you're not going to take it or tell everybody else not to take it, but you better make sure that you don't take it yourself. And if everybody follows that principle, then everybody that's not supposed to take it is going to not take it, man. Everyone of the elect will not take it, which we already know that everyone of the elect of the nation of Israel isn't going to take it anyway. But the point still, the point still stands. So let's let's go into this. This is Revelation chapter thirteen and verse sixteen, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So eventually it's going to get to where people cannot buy or sell things unless they've took part in this particular event, man. People are not going to be able to take take part in the world's commerce and the world's um, financial activities, man. They're not going to be able to buy things, meaning they're not going to be able to go to the store and obtain items, whether it be food, clothing, right? Whether it be buying or getting a loan or whatever, getting a car. And they're not also not going to be able to sell, meaning that if they don't have that piece of equipment in themselves as well, right, and they, or they don't allow that infrastructure infrastructure in their company to be able to be the only method used for buying and selling, then they're not going to be able to sell anything either. So they won't be able to have a company. So it will get to where when you join up with a gym, you'd have to have this thing because you have to use it to scan through the, the entrance. Right, which there's already some gyms. I remember back in two thousand and what was it, two thousand and twelve, when I when I was um in London, when I was a, as a student in London, I remember that one of the gyms that I joined up with at that particular time, had um 
it had I had to use my fingerprint to scan it. And I remember thinking that that was weird, man. I had to use my fingerprint. My fingerprint was on a database in order to scan into that gym. And that gym, that particular gym, just to put it out, there was a gym that's on um, Holloway Road in Wood Green. No, it was not Holloway Road. It was in Wood Green. Holloway Road is um not Wood Green. It was in it was a gym in Wood Green, right by the nearby the Wood Green tube station and the Wood Green shopping centre. It was one of the gyms over by there. Right? So that's just to prove that that kind of technology does take place. Whereas some of the gyms also like a pure gym over here that we have in the UK, you have to use um a code, but eventually we'll get to where you don't have that and you have to have a device, man. You have to have that device in your hand or in your forehead. And let me just go straight to the point of what the judgment for taking this is. You see, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the, of the, of the, wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out of our mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So that's the judgment for taking this thing. It's not no, oh, you can repent from taking it. No, if you take that, you're done. And that's why it's so important to have belief in what you think it is and to really understand that the, per, the, the mentioning of it, you being able to buy or sell of it, that's very important because it's literal. It literally means that you're going to have to have this to be able to buy or sell items. It doesn't mean that it's something that you're going to have to have and if you don't have it, then you can't buy yourself, right? It means that you're going to actually be able to use this thing to buy yourself. And you're not going to be able to buy yourself thing without it because that's going to become the standard infrastructure of how the world's running, man. There's already many things that are being done on this earth taking place. One, one such thing is a cashless society. So once the society goes completely cashless, then it makes its made way for now you having to use technology to make payments rather than objects, right? It's gonna become technologies used, whether it be your phone, a debit card, bank card, credit card, right? Or the, or the chips that people are even using right now. Because there's already people using these things right now, but you've got people playing games like, as if it's not already, it doesn't already exist. You can literally already look out into the world and see people using these things. You can see them. You can literally see it, man. There's no need to guess if people are using it for payments. You can literally see it. Just look it up. Just look up RFID payments and you'll see. Let me go to another scripture. This is <clears throat> Revelation chapter 15 and verse 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having harps in their hands. So while this thing right here is taking place, Revelation 14 and 9 to verse 10, while that's taking place, all those people that didn't take it are also going to be seeing this stuff take place, but they're going to be seeing it from the side of being outside the flames, right? They're going to see it as a side from being outside the flames, whereas the people that I've mentioned in verse 10 are going to be in those flames. Let me say that again, Revelation 15 and 2, is outside of the flames. Revelation 14 and 10 is what people are going to be, it's going to be that people that, for the people that are going to be in the flames, right? So I'd rather be standing on that sea of glass, right? Which is the perspective of the chariots, man. I'd rather be on that sea of glass than in those flames. I think that that's much, much more preferable, man. Now, let me go to this. This is Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and therefore the noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark MOTB and upon them which worshipped his image. So they're going to be, they're going to get a, um, a boil, man. They're going to get some like kind of radiation or some type of cancers within their body from taking this stuff, man. Every single person that took it is going to become a, a sign within their flesh that's going to show that they took it. Let me read it again. And the first went and poured his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the MOTB 
and upon them which worship his image. So people are going to have a a a a scar a scar or some type of marking shown on them outside of the place where they've had this thing put in them. That's going to show that they've took it, man, because it's going to, it's not going to react with their body in the right way. So then we're going to be able to physically see who has or hasn't took it in that time. But we're, we're, we're going to be able to know. Let me get another scripture on the mark. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. So the scriptures are letting you know that it's going to be a false prophet that's going to be working miracles, man. They might put something in someone's head and then that person can walk or that person can talk again or that person can see again, right? But they're still a false prophet because the things that they're causing you to do is going to get you destroyed. <clears throat> that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them. So they're deceiving people with those miracles with which he deceived them that had received them, MOTB, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So people are going to be deceived with, through miracles into taking this thing. So whatever it is that these people are going to see that's going to make them think it's worthwhile taking, it's a deception. Because once you've took it, you're going to die. There's no way around it. If you take it, you're going to die, man. There's no light way of saying it. There's no kind way of saying it. You're going to be in that fire with brimstone. But at the same time as you're going to be in them flames, there's going to be other Israelites that are going to be watching you in them flames, man, because it's going to be a whole bunch of heathens in there, right? That's going to be heathen barbecue, man. They're going to be in them flames screaming their lungs out, man. And really, <laughs> I say they're going to be screaming out. They're going to be screaming before the flames hit because... Once they're in them flames, <clears throat> they ain't gonna have a they ain't gonna have a tongue to scream. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. And this shall be the play where you how will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem. Their eyes shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their excuse me, <clears throat> their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So they're gonna their flesh is gonna be melting off, their skin's gonna be melting off, right? Their eyes are gonna be melting out of side of their socket, and their tongue's gonna melt away in their mouth. That's what's gonna be happening. That's what's gonna happen if you take this thing. So you might be walking around being able to buy Costa coffees with your hand for like a couple of months, thinking, yep, yeah, it's back to the good old days. It's a bit or it's a bit. It's a bit bad that I have to have this in my hand, but I can still just buy a coffee and get my Asda. But then at the end of it, you're going to see how a shy return and World War III is going to pop off and the flames are going to be coming, man. The nukes are going to be shut off. It's going to cause that lake of fire. It's going to cause for fire to rain down from the earth via these nukes, right? And certain people are going to be in those flames, man. And your shy is going to see them as long with the angels and along with the elect of the nation of Israel that are also going to see this thing take place. Let me read it again. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead and in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever received the mark of his name. So you ain't going, you're going to be catching hell in them flames, man. You're going to perish in that. And who knows how long you is going to make that feel for these people, man. Who knows? Because this is going to be the worst punishment that anyone's ever received in their life. So who knows how long he's going to make that seem like it's taking place for. Yahweh controls time. <clears throat> so time might be going for one second for one second for the, for the ratio for those people that are on the chariots at that time on that sea of glass from the perspective of a chariot right but for the other people it might be like once one one second in our time is a thousand seconds in the time in them flames man the ratio of time could change in that time man just getting touching a hot kettle or touching the wrong part of a hot hot glass, if you're drinking a cup of coffee or something like that, is bad enough. Never mind being in flames, man. Revelation chapter 15 and verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, 
and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having harps of God. So they're going to be seeing those flames taking place, man. And let me go to another scripture quickly that goes into how certain Israelites are going to be called up into the heavens when these things take place. Let me see if I remember where that is. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, it, of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And this is the same thing that he's speaking about in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But there's a lot of people that are going to take it. There's a lot of people that are going to say it's not so bad. Right? It's more convenient. I don't have to go in the queues, man. It scans as soon as I come out of the shop. Oh, I've got, a, I've got superpowers when i got this. I can, like, magnetic, I can do some magnetic thing with my hand. <clears throat> they're going to think that it's a good idea. And they're going to be destroyed. Right, so what I just read there, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to verse 17, is exactly the same thing that he's speaking about in Matthew 24 as well. With how after the tribulation of those days, meaning when World War Three's taken place and all of these things have gone on, right, and all the people have already took the, that are supposed to take that mark have taken it, right? Then Yahweh Shai is going to return because he's going to have to come and save the elect from the from that second death. <clears throat> Mark Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29 Immediately after the tribulation of those days Shall the sun be darkened And the moon shall not give her light And the stars shall fall from heaven And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven With power and great glory And he shall send his angel with a great son of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the one end of heaven to the other. And Pete brothers have had dreams about this kind of stuff, man. They and they every now and again they speak on their testimonies about these things. And brothers, women have had dreams about these kind of stuff more than likely too. And some some brothers and women have told them that they've had dreams about these things, but some brothers and women have probably not told them about some of these things, man, because they're scared and because they don't want to be humble and like Except that the man that they're with might be a man of the Lord, man. But some, some brothers and women have probably had dreams about these things and are scared about the dream that they've had, man. And they're still unsure in their mind of whether their man's really about the Lord or whatever. So they haven't told him. Let me think. I'm trying to think of another scripture that also goes into, into getting called up into the heavens. man. I believe there's one in Revelation 12 as well. Because all the people that take this thing, right, they're going to be the people that are going to be getting in those flames, man. And that's why it's important to not take that. Let me see if I can remember where this is. It's either in 12 or it's in 11. I think it's in 11 then. This is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies <laughs> and their enemies beheld them. So people are gonna be seeing. <laughs> you know, I, I love hearing about this kind of stuff, man. People are gonna be seeing the Israelites getting beamed up, right? And they're gonna be there. The, the, the people that are not getting beamed up. <clears throat> the people that are not getting beamed up are gonna be, are gonna be standing there. With that device in their hand, and they're gonna have once upon a time thought that they had made the right decision, but when they see, <laughs> when they see the Israelites getting beamed up that haven't took it, they're gonna be down there looking stupid, man. Let me read this again: Revelation chapter eleven and verse twelve. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, "Come up hither." And they ascended up to a cloud, in, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake. And a tenth part of the city fell, and in the and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frighted, 
and God gave glory to the power of heaven, man. And that's that's they're gonna be they're gonna be afraid because they're gonna see this. They're gonna be these these, these people mentioned in Revelation eleven <clears throat> and twelve are the same people mentioned in Revelation fifteen and two, right? And are also the same people that are mentioned in Matthew chapter twenty four and verse. 29 and verse down to verse 31 right and are also the same people that i mentioned in um let me let me find it man are also the same people that i mentioned in first thessalonians 4 and verse 16 right to verse 17 and they're also the same people that i mentioned in let me see if i can remember the scripture and they're also the same people that i mentioned in revelation 19 i believe it is or is it revelation 18 and the last couple of verses in Revelation 18 where it says, Rejoice over her. Yeah, these are, these are the same people as well. Here, yeah. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged you on her. So they're going to be afraid, right? Like it says in Revelation 11, because they're going to see how Yahweh really is going to jack these people up, man. Right? Even Habakkuk spoke about being afraid and said, Was you angry with the trees? He said, was you angry with the trees? Um, Isar, Ezra, he saw these things and was terrified, right? And many people, many people are going to be glorifying in Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahashai. Many Israelites are going to be glorifying in Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahashai when they see how easily it was for America to be completely destroyed, man. And the people that are not even going to be in America, they're going to be afraid. If you read Revelation 18, it says they're going to be casting dust upon their heads. They're going to be bugging out, man. They're going to see that America got destroyed in one hour. So don't consider yourself that, don't consider in your heart that it's a light thing to take that thing into your hand, man. What that's going to be where you're going to have to, like, let me let me say it this way, man. <clears throat> let me read this scripture again and I must speak. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to, to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake, there were slain of men 7,000. And it doesn't mean literally 7,000. It just means a large portion of people, right? A, a a complete number of people is going to be completely destroyed, man. And the remnant were frighted and gave glory to the power of heaven. They're going to be praising Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Right? And if I'm not mistaken, that's what it says in Revelation 18 and 20. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged her, you on her. So we're going to be praising Yahweh for avenging America for what it did to us. It's the same event taking place. It's the same event, man. Like that's why we can't consider it a light thing in our hearts that taking this device is just a tech piece of technology, man. <clears throat> we can't be saying it's June, right? We can't be scoffing. We have to really be, even, even the things that they've tried to claim that the mark is, we've considered those in our mind or we should have considered those things in our mind and disproved them so that we can further believe what we're saying it is, is the true thing. Because they've said it's some people, other people have said it's some loads of different things. I've heard people say it's a 666 tattoo. Right, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I've heard people say that to my face. Right. Then I've heard I've heard that people have said that it's the so called Edomite woman. Right? I've heard people say it's Christianity. Like there's been many different things. So like here, yeah, there's been many different things that people have said that it is, but none of those things make sense. But the thing that we're saying it is, which is that device, that grain of rice that's gonna go into your hand. Or in your forehead and that you can actually see the technology is in the world right now that can actually be used to buy or sell items like it says in revelation 13 and 17 and that no man might buy or sell say he say if he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so you're going to requ require all of that right you're going to require all of that to be able to buy or sell at that time that's what's going to be necessary to be able to buy or sell items right but people don't want to People don't want to believe that. And here, here's the point. Because some people might say in here, in um, 17, it says, or, it says, or, it says the mark, or the name, or the number. 
right? But Revelation doesn't say it. Revelation 14 and 9 don't say that. Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the, um, the beast and his image and his mark in his forehead and all, all in his hand, right? So that people that people are gonna like it's gonna be either if you take the one in your forehead or the one in your hand, you're through. Don't take none of them. That's what the scripture's saying. Don't take none of it, man. Because I I I don't want to be getting having that visual of people seeing me getting burnt to death. I'd rather be on the chariot personally. And that's why all of our faith that we're building up right now. Is to overcome the hour of temptation, which is where it's that final moment by where if we take this thing, we're done, man. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that is talking about that day where that device gets made mandatory because anyone that takes it, they, they, don't, they can question when we're saying, oh, and a lot of people that say, oh, you're saying that salvation is only for the Israelites and all of this. Well, you can say it's not then, right? But anyone that takes this, it doesn't really matter whether there was an Israelite or not after that. They're going to be destroyed, man. So they've proven that they wasn't, even if there was an Israelite that didn't know there was, they're going to have proven in that day that they wasn't of the elect. They're going to prove in that day if they take it that they wasn't of the elect. <clears throat> Verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And that's why we ain't supposed to be trying to change the doctrine. We ain't supposed to be trying to think that we've all of a sudden received a revelation that's going to change the doctrine and change things around. We ain't supposed to be trying to become some archaeological experts and be saying that I found some um, that I found some archaeology of a femur bone in West Africa. That's totally, we ain't supposed to be coming into that BS, man. That's for people that don't have faith. People that don't have faith require all sorts of proof and then after you give them some proof and certain things they're going to require even more and then when you give them more then they're going to require even more and to the point where it's going to get to where faith is going to be required and not proof because we can't prove <clears throat> that the hebrew alphabet is exactly the way we believe that it is and we believe that we found the hebrew alphabet again through faith we believe that yahweh's name is yahweh and that yahweh shai's name is yahweh shai by faith and if we're telling the truth, then it's going to be proven in that day that we're telling the truth. These things about faith rather than anything else, man. And we have faith that if we don't take this thing, then we're going to be glorified in the kingdom of heaven. But if we do take it, we're going to get everlasting shame and contempt and also be completely destroyed and also have that memory of getting destroyed in that day when Yahweh Shai came to save the elect. Rather than getting saved by that saved by him in that day, when Yahweh Shai came to save the elect, and it's very obvious which side it's better to be on, man. And I'm gonna end the lesson there. Do not take this, man. Don't take it. Don't take it, man. And in fact, before I end this lesson, I want to just show that some people, right, are gonna be so so um have so much zeal to not take it that they're gonna lose their lives. Revelation chapter twenty and verse four, and I saw thrones. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have they seen his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with a mashiach a thousand years. So there's certain Israelites that are going to be, going to go through that, man. And Yahweh's going to be with whoever it is that's going to have to go through that, man. Yahweh is going to be with them. Yahweh Shai is going to be with them. Who knows how it's going to be like, man? They might see Yahweh Shai in, in, in the heavenly realm, just like how just like how Stephen saw the heavenly realm when he was getting killed by wicked Israelites, man. Yahweh is going to give them that ultimate zeal to be able to go through that in that day. So it's not a thing by where men are going to have to fear. Yahweh is going to be with them in that day, man. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to be with these men in that day. And they're going to receive heavenly honour in the kingdom of heaven for refusing this wickedness. I'm gonna end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Don't take the mark.